If you're like me, when it comes to building web APIs, you want to focus on building the backend part of your API. You don't want to focus on all of the other details like how to make authentication work, how to get rate limiting working, all of those other things. You know that those things are important, but having to go implement them time and time again just really isn't that exciting. This is where API gateways can come into play. They offer us a host of different benefits so that we don't have to go reinvent the wheel and re-implement things every time we go make a service. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In today's video, we're going to look at Zooplo, which is offering us an API gateway. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Zooplo, but I want to tell you the story about how I heard about Zooplo and why I thought this was such an interesting opportunity to pursue. Now, when Zooplo reached out to me, they were telling me about a problem I didn't really know existed. But once they started showing me their platform and walking me through the different features, I had an aha moment. And that aha moment for me was realizing that they were solving all of these different things that I really just didn't like spending time doing. And I want to give you a perfect example of this. Bear with me for a second because this might not make sense right away, but last year I wrote this article on generating ASCII art in C Sharp, and it was a great success. I've had a lot of traffic to my blog and YouTube channel strictly because of this topic. I thought it was pretty cool. I strongly considered creating a service for this because I thought it would be really cool for people to either upload an image or provide a URL and then I could give them back the ASCII art. Now I had all of the code for this, it's in my blog, but what was challenging for me is I just didn't want to put the effort into rate limiting, into authentication, I just didn't want to think about that. I didn't want to put this service out on the internet for just anyone to use, and I knew that I'd have to go build out some type of solution to solve these problems. But I had a lot of other things to do, and quite honestly, building out that stuff wasn't interesting, and I knew it would be error prone, because let's face it, every time you're going to do this stuff, and there's security and things like that involved, it's really easy to screw it up with a subtle detail missing. Now, when I was getting the Zooplo demo and having this realization, I thought, hey, this would be perfect for me to go build my ASCII art generator API that I always wanted to go build. Well, as of last year, when I went to go put this article together, that's always. But back to my aha moment with Zooplo. As they were walking through the different functionality that their platform offers, I realized that I could finally go make this ASCII art generating API. I thought it would be the perfect candidate for this, and with all of the features that they have, this is going to take multiple videos to be able to walk through all of the capabilities and do this end to end, but truly they make it extremely simple with their platform and that's why I'm so excited to do this. By the end of this video, what we'll have in place is an API that we can access through Zooplo that will enable all of these other features that I'll mention, and that's going to hit my server that I have running in Azure. The follow-up videos that I'll create from there will talk about the different rate limiting, authentication, and monetization of the API that I put together. So let's start by heading over to Zooplo's portal that they offer. So I have this project here. You can see that it's dev leader to do one. And I want to explain my approach for getting started here, because when I land on this portal page and I can create a new project, the options that I have are an empty one or a to-do list. And full transparency here, right? My style of learning and exploring things is not to start from scratch. I love seeing things that are already working so that I can start tinkering with them a little bit. And that way, if there's things I don't understand, I can at least see the things I'm touching when I end up breaking something versus starting from scratch and going, I can't get it to work right from the beginning. So starting with the to-do list is what I did, even though I'm not making a to-do list, I'm making an ASCII art generator. I just wanted to see some working examples. So this dev leader to-do one is the project that I made. I'm gonna click into that. And this is the portal that we get to start working with our API. As you might notice on the left, it kind of looks like a file folder hierarchy, and that's basically exactly what it is. So what's awesome about this system is that it's completely hooked up to Git. If I end up pressing save after making modifications right there in the bottom left, what ends up happening is that it goes and publishes it to Git, and then from there, the deployment runs. And it's almost instant, right? It takes a few seconds. And that way, if you're making documentation changes to your API, making functional changes to your API, anything like that, it takes place almost instantaneously. The developer experience for this is ridiculously good. I think a lot of us are used to making changes, pushing them up, having to wait for a pipeline to run. It might take minutes, depending on your organization or something that could take hours. I know that's going to be in extreme situations, right? But having this immediate feedback where we can do something like adding a policy directly into the request flow and having that take place seemingly immediately 
is incredible. So the place that I started off was clicking on this routes.oas.json file. And when I made this originally, because it was a to-do list application, there was a lot more routes here. So I've since gotten rid of them because they're not applicable to this demo. Truly, I think that was the right move for me because I got to go look at what was there and see the different examples that they had to work with. Now, for me, the way that I wanted to approach making my ASCII art API was not to use C Sharp at all. Initially, what I wanted to do was take that C Sharp code and say, I'm going to jam it all into TypeScript so that I can run it right on the edge. I want to have it directly in Zooplo so that I don't have to run a server at all. So in order to make a route where we can handle the code directly in Zooplo, I go to add route. And then when I switch the handler here from URL forward, I can select function. From there, I can press this menu to pick a module. And what I'm going to do is add a new one right here. And I'll give it a name like test for YouTube. So I'll create that. And you'll see that on the left hand side, it added this test yt file. And it's already added it here. So we have some default code with a, a bit of a default route saying return what is up. Awesome. So <laughs> that route that I just added, I think it said slash path one. When someone hits the Zooplo endpoint with slash path one, it's going to call this function that's written in TypeScript. So I was thinking, perfect. Now my job is simple. All that I have to do is go take that C sharp code that I have working and put it into TypeScript. But there was one problem that I wasn't prepared for. And that's that I suck at working in TypeScript. And it seems pretty simple. And for anyone watching this who knows more about TypeScript, you're probably rolling your eyes I'm just admitting my fault here, but the challenge with an ASCII art generator is that I want to be able to support multiple image formats. And as soon as you go down that path, you have to look at including modules. Zooplo by default has some modules built in that we can use for Node, but the problem was that I needed to include external ones that they don't have directly on their platform already. That is totally supported by Zooplo. But when I was going to follow some of their instructions, I went, ah, you know what? That's a little bit over my head right now for what I'm trying to do. And I already have the code that does this in C Sharp. All that I have to do is publish it to Azure and I already have a server there. So it would take me just a few moments to be able to do that. Now, the cool part is that I can still show you that on YouTube, this is where I would have gone to add that code. All that I'd have to do is convert my C Sharp code to TypeScript, get the right module, have that supported, and then I could take an image and I could go return the ASCII art for it. It's just a string that's the response. But because that was just a little bit over my head, I decided, cool, let's go do the alternative route. No pun intended. So if I go back to here, this is a route that I've already created, and you can see that I gave it a little description, gets ASCII art for an image at a URL. So I decided the route that I wanted to have would be called ASCII for image URL. And it's going to take a post request and that post request will have the URL inside of it. And the reason that I did this is because my server is able to take a couple of options. And I'll expand upon that in the future, but some basic points that I want to get across are that you might want to be able to scale up or down the image that you're providing. Because if you have ASCII art being generated for something that's, I don't know, a 4K image or greater, that might be a ton of text and you don't want it. So I wanted to be able to make sure that I could truly have some post data, go through, make it to my server and do the work. In the bottom here, I have this URL handler and that's going to be able to rewrite the request that's coming in and pass that over to my server that's running in Azure. So I can give it a completely different URL that's separate from the one that people would be hitting for Zooplo, which is awesome. And another thought that I had was that because currently I have my own server, technically I could start creating different endpoints here directly in Zooplo. And maybe instead of having a post that's accepting, uh, you know, JSON text as the body, Instead of doing that, I could maybe create a new URL and try it out where the query parameters uh, include the URL that you want to convert the image for. So I'd be able to do all of that directly in Zooplo, transforming that into a post body, and then I could send that over to my server. And then I wouldn't even have to touch any of my C Sharp code again. So that's one of the really cool things that we could do with an API gateway. And Zooplo lets you do it directly in this portal, which is super easy. So with what you see on the screen right now, where I have this new route that's doing a URL rewrite to my server, 
it's basically almost done. This allows me to have Zuplo support to go build out the other things, like documentation, rate limiting, I can do authentication, so I can make API keys that people can use, and that way they're identified for their rate limiting. And from there, I can also monetize my API. So a whole bunch of different functionality that I can start to stack on top of my API. But there was one more catch that I was concerned about. And it's funny because I reached out to Zuplo and I said, hey, I don't know if you have a good pattern for this, but I wanted to make sure that if I put my server out there on the internet, it's running in the cloud, how do I make sure or how do you guys suggest that I end up allowing only Zuplo traffic to go into my server? And they said, oh, that's simple. All that you need to do is have an API key that you can use and pass that in the request. And I thought, duh. And the next thing they said was, and of course, that's in our intro documentation. And I felt like a bit of an idiot at this point because, of course, there's documentation. I looked at it very briefly in the beginning, but like many of us, I got too excited and just jumped right into the portal. So there was one more step I had to take to make this a little bit more secure, even though I haven't talked about the rate limiting and authentication stuff. That will come later. But I wanted to make sure, at least between Zuplo and my Azure server, that I had my bases covered. And that's going to be with these policies. So if I press this policies drop down here, you can see that I've gone ahead and added in a policy directly in this request path. And we can add policies on the request path and on the response path as well. Now, this is super cool, but if I press the add policy button, they have tons of policies built in for you right away, and you can write custom ones too. But I want to stop here for a second because for someone like me who just doesn't want to have to deal with coding up these policies, this is a huge time saver. It reduces so much cognitive load for me that I don't have to go researching online the best way to go code this up in C Sharp or whatever other language I happen to be using, probably C Sharp if we're being honest here, I don't have to think about how to go figure that out. I can just say, what do I want? I want basic auth, I want caching, I want something else. I can just pick one of their policies and I'm not gonna walk through all of them, but look if I scroll through, look how many are just built in for us right away. Like this is sweet. For me, I needed to be able to set a request header because I need to have Zuplo add in an API key for my server. And that's not to be confused with an API key that you might need if you wanted to access my route through Zuplo. This is purely one for my backend server that Zuplo is routing to. So I created a key and then I needed to use this add or set request headers to be able to do that. Now, if I go open up the existing policy, here's what it looks like, right? So I didn't have to go write code. We just have this simple JSON config here. And you can see that I'm just pulling in an environment variable. Now, at this point, I have a route in Zuplo that someone could hit. Again, no authentication or rate limiting yet, but someone could hit that Zuplo route. It will go to my server. It will use an API key in the request header, get the ASCII art as the response, and then pass that back to the caller who was hitting Zuplo. I think for me that one of the most exciting things was just how simple it was to click through and do this because for me, this kind of stuff is absolutely not interesting to me. It sounds kind of funny, I know, but I like spending my time writing the logic for my different services, the routes I wanna have. I just don't wanna spend time doing this stuff. I know it's critical. I know we need rate limiting and authentication and all of these things that are here. I know they're important. I just don't want to spend the time doing them, and I don't want to be responsible for messing up a subtle detail for something that's been invented already that I shouldn't have to go rediscover. The other thing that was super powerful about this that I really enjoyed is just how fast it is to press save and have everything deployed right away. And I'm checking here, I added a path dash one route here, and I can just show you, like I don't need this route, but let me just save it and show you how fast it happens. So building new gateway, you can see in the bottom, I'm not fast forwarding this, right? I talked the whole time. It tells you the time it took. It took five seconds. It's done. There's a new route available. Like this video has been edited, but like I talked the whole time, right? Like it gave you the time. That's how quick it is. There's a new route. To me, the speed and ease of use are really what makes this work. Okay, so this video would not be complete unless I could show you that this route was actually working. I've hooked up Zuplo, like I said, 
to my server that's running in Azure, and I should be able to call the route. So I have Postman opened up here. We're going to be doing a post request here. I have the URL for Zoopla that is my endpoint that I've added. You can see the ASCII for image URL that's added right onto the end here. So that is the one that we just made. And like I mentioned, because it's a post request, I needed a JSON body that would have the image URL. I ended up doing it this way, as I mentioned earlier, because I have a whole bunch of other parameters and I didn't want to put them as query parameters to start. I will try adding another endpoint to see if I can transform it because I think that would be a fun experiment. But I have this image URL that's pointing to a smiley face that I found on the internet. So if I press send with this post, we should get some ASCII art coming back. And as you can see, it might be a little bit difficult because it's not formatted nicely, but this is truly some ASCII art for a smiley face. It's just that it's not split across the different lines. You gotta trust me on that. And that's my intro to working with Zooplo. I personally found this was extremely easy to use. It was really exciting to be able to get set up on the platform and now be enabling all of these different features like rate limiting, authentication, having some nice API docs that I can go create. All of this is awesome. And at the end of all of these videos that I'll put together, I want to turn on monetization for my API. So I highly suggest you go check out Zooplo. I'll have links and everything in the comments and the description so you can go check that out. As I mentioned, this is sponsored by Zooplo, but I wouldn't be promoting it if I wasn't excited to go use it myself. Now, when the next video is ready and I start to look at things like API documentation, rate limiting, and all the other fun stuff, you can go check that out here. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.